Now that we've covered the basics of session theory in the first video, in this video we're actually going to use sessions and see how it actually works. So what I've done is I've created two basic pages, basic PHP pages, and uh, I filled in a little bit of code, session one, session uh, page one, page two. So let's look at the first thing we need to do. To enable sessions in PHP, you have to call a session function, and that session function is called session start. This basically tells the PHP engine that we want to use session on this page. To be clear, sessions are essentially, it's an auto, it's an auto global array. And uh, if you go back to our videos on associative arrays, that, that is essentially what a session is. It's an associative array and it has some extra capabilities as well. So by calling this function in PHP session underscore start, we're telling PHP that we want to use session on this page. You need to call session.start at the top of your page for it to work properly. Let me demonstrate. So I've launched a browser window and you see that everything works. Welcome to Killer PHP. It's very simple. Welcome to Killer PHP. I'm not actually doing anything with the session object here. All I'm doing is telling PHP we want to use session and session is now available on this page. And we, again, I load a page, everything works. Now look what happens if I insert a blank space here and let's reload the page. You see, I get this PHP error, cannot send session cache limiter, headers already sent. So what that tells us is that when you're calling a session, it has to be the very first thing on your page. Even a blank space like this is enough to uh, cause a session to malfunction on your page. I don't want to get into all the nerdy details why this is the case. What it comes down to is that session information has to be sent in the header as opposed to the body. Uh, it, it's the way in which web pages are sent down to the browser from the web server. First they said the header and number two they send the body. This would be the body of course, all this stuff. So if you don't set your session start at the very header of your page, you're going to have this error down here. I have set it back again and if I press refresh you see session is now operating correctly on the page. Like any other arrays, sessions have to be given values. So let's do that up here. And I'm just going to cut and paste this into place. And what I've done is I basically called the session auto global. We know it's an auto global because we have the dollar underscore and session. We've seen these type of auto globals or super globals when we were uh, processing forms. It's the same type of thing. Session auto globals are accessible on any page in your PHP site as long as you have a session start called at the top of your page. So I've set up a session auto global variable. I called it time and I assigned it the value of date. Now this is a date function. And this date, this is the argument. We talked about functions in a previous video. It tells basically the date function how to format the date information. So I've inserted this date information into session. So let's see what happens when we load our page. And nothing should change for us visually because we haven't actually told PHP to do anything visually. So now that this value, the date, is in our session time, we should be able to access this value in any session enabled page. So let's go to session.php and you see I've already enabled the session here and I'm just going to now access that session value. The shortcut way to do this is just to call the session function, excuse me, just to echo out the session value. Again, it's a super global array, it's an auto global array and if you recall back when I did the arrays videos, I was talking about how arrays were used everywhere in PHP, how we used it in form processing, 
And this is another example of how we're using uh, arrays or knowledge of arrays, in this case, associative arrays in, with session. So here we go, we're, we're just echoing out the value of whatever's held in session time. So let's just save that. And uh, let's actually test this out. So you see in our first page where we actually set the session value, right? We've, we've assigned time a value. And then down here, well, we've done nothing else. We just have a link linking to our second page. So let's actually try this out in the browser. Here we go again. Let me just refresh. So when I first hit this page, the first page, it sets the session value, which is the time value. So now I'm going to go to that second page, and we see, sure enough, the value is held here, which is the current time, or the time at which we actually um, set the value. Now, let me refresh this. You notice the time is not changing. The reason the time is not changing is because we set the value for session time, right? We're calling it here in the first page. So at the moment that the script is processed, it gets the time, it puts it in session, and it holds this value. So this won't change unless we go back to the first page, the index page, and this will reset. So if I go back again, I click through, now you've seen it's changed for us. Again, that's because session value is getting set only on this page, and on the second page, it's being read. Does that make sense? Okay, let's add another value to our session auto global. So I'm just going to cut and paste this in to make uh, our life easier. So I've, I created another session uh, variable. I call it browser. And now I'm using the server auto global. Again, we know it's an auto global because we got the dollar and the, the underscore and all cap server. And we're asking the server auto global to give us the HTTP server user agent. Basically, that's the browser that the particular user is using. So let's, let's save. I saved that already. So let's make sure everything's cool. I'll reload. Okay, no errors. So now we know that session browser has a value now. So let's call session browser inside of our next page. So I'm just going to copy that. Put in another paragraph. And I'll echo that out. PHP makes that kind of simple for me. So, no, okay, I didn't have to do that. Let's do that. So I'm just going to change this to browser. So let's see how that works out for us. So I reload the page. All right, so you see that indeed the session has now been loaded up with the two values that we see here, the time and the browser used. So we have two session variables. We have time and we have session variable browser.